When spring came that April of 1847, the Quorum of the Twelve, under the direction of Brigham Young, handpicked a vanguard company and left winter quarters with 143 men, three women, and two young boys, 72 wagons, 93 horses, 66 oxen, 52 mules, 19 cows, 17 dogs, and some chickens. Between that refuge and the promise of Zion stood a vast plain and the fertile Platte River, their lifeline as they pushed farther into the American West. Moving across Nebraska, they marked the rolling miles and journeyed past Chimney Rock, a solitary formation jutting out of the prairie. Into this land, speckled with sage and air swirling with dust, tired oxen lumbered, wagon wheels creaked, brave men and women toiled, and occasionally wolves howled. Even today, signs of their crossing are carved into the landscape. The pioneers left the North Platte and now followed the Sweetwater, a stream they would ford many times. Camping at the round outcropping called Independence Rock, a few of these 19th century travelers left their names on the granite stone. Past Independence Rock, the wagons skirted the side of Devil's Gate a deep gash in the hillside and often mentioned in their journals. The trail soon turned upward and increasingly rocky. Here at Rocky Ridge is holy ground. This very spot is one of the highest points on the trail west. The pioneers who came over this ridge faced discouragement, some even death, as they inched their way up the sharp slope. I hold in my hand a square nail and a piece of metal jolted loose from a wagon or a handcart. Imagine facing this ridge in a wagon, then imagine pulling a handcart. For some, the punishing climb of Rocky Ridge would be fatal. The Martin and Willie Handcart companies of 1856 were caught in early blizzards near the summit. Rescue came from Salt Lake, but too late to save close to 200 souls who perished in the cold and deep snow. Martin's Cove sheltered many during that agonizing and poignant time. A memorial at Rock Creek honors those buried here for their faith in the face of enormous adversity. In the heroic effort of the handcart pioneers, we learn a great truth. All must pass through a refiner's fire, and the insignificant and unimportant in our lives can melt away like dross and make our faith bright, intact, and strong. There seems to be a full measure of anguish, sorrow, and often heartbreak for everyone, including those who earnestly seek to do right and be faithful. Yet, this is part of the purging to become acquainted with God. With the Wind River peaks to the north, the Pioneer Trail crossed South Pass, the only major break between mountain ranges and the most direct route to the Great Basin. Entering northeastern Utah, they worked their way slowly through Echo Canyon, a narrow passageway flanked by red, overhanging cliffs. This final stretch would try what little strength was left. Ahead loomed a broken succession of hills piled on hills and mountains in every direction. Hearts full of enthusiasm to be so near their journey's end often sank as they knew there was only one way to go, up and over. 
On this high summit they named Big Mountain, the pioneers gazed for the first time on their new home, a glistening mountain valley on the far horizon. What joy they must have felt. The countless sacrifices and struggles along the way were nearly over. The Salt Lake Valley was in sight. Although much hardship still lay ahead, they had endured. With feet worn and weary with fatigue, they had kept step with their faith. Big Mountain holds a special place in my heart. A pioneer ancestor, Gibson Condy, came over this summit on his way to help rescue the stranded handcart pioneers. At the call of a prophet, he journeyed to this very spot in the bitter winter of 1856. The snow was 16 feet deep on the road. How grateful I am for this pioneer ancestor who, leaving the comfort of home and family, risked his own safety to help those in such desperate need. 